In this video, I want to explain why integration is possible. This may sound like a weird topic, but it actually fits very well in this sequence of videos, because it is going to be our second application of the mean value theorem. And I will explain what I mean with an example. Have a look at this little exercise. I want to find all functions f whose derivative is x squared. So functions defined for all real numbers whose derivative is always x squared. By guessing, by trial and error, you can get one answer, which is one third of x cubed. It's easy to see once we think of it that it works. But it's not the only solution. I can also take one third of x cubed plus any constant, and that will also be a solution, since adding a constant doesn't change the derivative. But could there be any other solutions? Are those all the functions that satisfy this, or are there more? In principle, if we think we're done, this is something we would have to prove. Uh, perhaps there are other functions we haven't thought of. The answer is no, there are no others, but we do have to prove it. Specifically, I want to prove this claim. I want to show that if a function satisfies this equation, if the derivative is x squared, then it, there must exist a constant c such that the function is one third of x cubed plus c. So that will guarantee that we are done. Fortunately, the proof is short with the things we know so far, and it's going to go in three steps. First, a theorem we already know. Uh, I remind you that we know if a function has zero derivative on an open interval, then it must be constant. That's something we proved in the previous video, and we're going to be using it here. This was an application of the mean value theorem. Second, a corollary. A corollary means a theorem that is short is a quick consequence of some other theorem, so a quick consequence of the previous theorem. If instead of one function I begin with two functions f and g, and I assume they have the same derivative on an open interval, then what can I conclude? Well, if they have the same derivative, I can conclude the difference must be constant, and that's because the difference will have zero derivative. So by the theorem, the difference must be constant. How does this help me? Well, in the third step, I can prove the claim now. If I begin with a function f and I assume its derivative is x squared, then the derivative of this function is the same as the derivative of the function one third of x cubed. And by the corollary, the two functions might differ by a constant, and that's exactly what I was trying to prove. So I was able to prove it, and it turns out it's true. I had all the solutions. But this bears repeating because it's very important. Without the mean value theorem, I would have only have been able to say that any function of the form one third of x cubed plus c is a solution to this equation and that these are some of the solutions. But thanks to the mean value theorem, I'm able to say that these are all the solutions. And this is much more important. And of course, you can notice that there is nothing special about this function. The same could apply to any other function. And in fact, this is at the core of all integration methods. Integration methods are techniques to try to find all functions with a given derivative. And they're all based on the same idea. You just find one and then you add plus c. But uh, we needed to know that that actually works, that that will produce all the solutions. So the mean value theorem is at the foundation of all integration theory. And therefore, I think that this application by itself justifies all the work that we had to put into learning how to prove the mean value theorem.